Hello guys, how are you? The video today is about uh, the build of the Santa Maria now, episode 3, until this stage. So, I hope you enjoy it. Welcome back to the third episode of um, the build about the Santa Maria now. Today I'll be sharing the progress I've made on completing the hull, adding some detail to the deck of this ship. It's been a journey. It's been quite a journey. Um, I like to think that I poured my heart and soul into it, as I do on every kit. And as a builder myself, I have embraced the challenge. And this has been a challenge, but at the same time, I I'm growing uh, a lot on experience uh, on this. So now, as we focus on the deck, this ship, this model starts to reveal a little bit of the beauty on every detail. Um, and it's kind of a legacy also to these caravels. Not the Santa Maria itself because herself, because I don't agree, I told you, with this shape of this shape of the caravel of the Santa Maria however it's a beautiful depiction of um, a caravel now and I am enjoying it very much as always I hope you are well safe and I hope that you enjoy this video now I want to show you um, an important very important step on this model placing the dead eyes on our ship model. First of all, uh, I know that probably the majority of this, these caravels, these nows, back then used triangular, okay, uh, dead eyes. But it happens that I had here a lot of these um, wood round dead eyes. I didn't have, first of all, I didn't have any triangular ones. Then I am also practicing for HMS Victory and I did a research and round dead eyes were also used. Um, I know that basically the, the story of the caravel Santa Maria um, tells us about triangular ones. I don't want to be controversial on this subject, okay? I prefer to put round ones. Um, I think that in the end you will look at, at her the way it's built and you will enjoy it but I leave that to your opinion okay now correct me if I'm wrong but I think it's starboard side I used uh, I built the straps which are uh, made usually of flexible rope and are the cables that hold the dead eyes in place uh, correct me if I'm wrong but I think it's drops in English I made these drops out of rope but I had some uh, photo etch here and on the other side I used those metal straps. I had to adapt to the scale again but I think in the end you be the judge of it but I think that you will you won't notice any difference so it was good for me because they're practically the same if you look at the model when finished and it gave me a little bit of experience with the rope ones which are I already knew and the, the um, photo wedge ones which I never made all I had to do was put them in the place and then I had to cut a little bit of the excess uh, material from the inside of the hull because I didn't these drops are not as they should be as you know the texture on the hull brings the little metal inch that completes uh, the, 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 the connection between the, stro the strops and the, um, the hull and I had to compensate that okay so I had to make a hole and cut on the inside after putting it all inside the, the hull. So I think in the end the illusion is created. You cannot see, you can't see uh, 
the, the, the excess material and it connects very well with the rest of the model. Took a little bit of effort to adjust them to the holes of the hull of the model, but in the end I think it was worth it. And so now I am going to show you what I did first with the thread, okay? If I paint this black, dark, uh, gray and a little bit of dry brushing, it will be look like uh, metal, you know? But on the other side, it's not perfect here, need a few adjustments still, but either way really looks like metal and something that was from here so one way or the other I am kind of um, pleased with the results and now we are gluing the first deck and on the first as in every deck in every model in every kit um, we have to make sure that there's no leaps no seam lines you know that's why dry fitting is so important when you dry fit you test and you can see the gaps that are going to appear when the time comes and you can work uh, in just preventing it you know so that's why it's so important to dry fit first. And now we are going to build uh, a boat inside of a ship or <laughs> a boat inside that goes inside another one. Uh, this raft uh, that they used, the sailors used to go ashore and other stuff. So I thought it was very poor in detail. To be very honest, this had no detail whatsoever, so I thought that I should detail it a bit. And here I am noticing it now because I am narrating this video as I watch the video unedited. Don't be confused, uh, I used evergreen styrene strips and wood strips. So first you saw the styrene and then you saw a strip these are wood strips okay so I'm not re-editing this I just wanted to show you that I used um, evergreen strips starting and these uh, wood strips uh, this on the bottom of the, the this raft could have been better but what I wanted was not was just to give it the impression of, of, of some detail to adding some detail because this will be inside the boat, Santa Maria, and you won't be able to see it. However, I really enjoyed making this and I really enjoyed the final result. As you can see, I tried to do my best here, but this, is, this was my first. So I used some um, photographs and uh, some YouTube videos, of course, of other modelers, model builders. Um, and I tried to do my best here because this was very naked. This kit didn't even brought any rope, any, any, any thread. So I just tried to make my best here. I tried to carve some detail of wood strips at least something that I could uh, say that, well, it has some texture if I look at it. And yeah, I know I know that I should probably now in retrospective uh, have been a little bit more between the spaces, a little bit more shorter because the scale, you know. But in the end of the, at the end of the day, after sanding it and painting it, um, it, it, it doesn't look bad much much better than before because it had any detail at all I told you before so this is a learning curve so 
moving along, building and trying to do a bit of something different every time. And if you're here for the first time, first of all, welcome. I would kindly ask you, if you're enjoying this video, to subscribe if you want to. It's completely free. And at the same time, I also want to thank my supporters here on YouTube. Thank you guys. You do make a difference. Thank you very much. So this coat that I am applying, very misty coat, uh, it's matte 94 which is a kind of an ochre color with a little bit of white, okay? Uh, allow me to explain the best way I can uh, what is the air spray technique. Most of you already know it and apply it much, much better than I do. But here's how it works. First. We start with the base coat of paint on our model, okay? Let's say in this case, uh, matte 94 and then uh, all the, the dark brown and such. Once that's dry, we grab a can of good old air spray and we decant it, okay? To a cup, to the airbrush directly, whatever. Yes, you heard it right, hairspray. Now we spray a light mist of air spray over the painted surface. This goes to create a thin tacky layer that will act as our sealant for the next step. The key here is not to go crazy with the air spray, okay? Just a light mist will do the trick. Once the air spray is applied, we let it dry for a few minutes until it becomes slightly sticky. Now comes the fun part, we take a second color, let's say metallic silver or in this case dark brown and apply it over the air spray layer. But wait, you don't panic here because we're not aiming for perfection here, okay? As you can see, uh, the chunks of paint removed are very big. Now we're using a variety of techniques like dry brushing or even a sponge and we start removing some of that uh, paint, that brown paint, uh, those little chunks of paint removed that make, uh, they, are, they are a bit uh, appealing to the eye, you know, and you think this is not right, we try to go underneath it and soften it and break it, allowing the paint, in this case, the brown, dark brown paint to come off in a realistic, and random way, mimicking natural wear and tear. It's amazing how this technique can bring out the texture and depth on our models. You can experiment with different colors, okay, intensities, and even layer multiple hairspray and paint coats for more complex effects. And there you have it. This is, in the best way that I can explain, what is for me the air spray technique. did this all around this boat, okay? And then with the dry brushing, and I used several tones, you know, a little bit of white on the Matte 94, a little bit of white in the dark brown, and I did some dry brushing. Hours went by and I was having a ball doing this. And at the end, I think it was worth it.
And as you see, the dry brushing does all the difference, okay? It just tones down those little chunks of paint that went by, it went off and you think, oh my God, this is exaggerated. This is just a mess. It just tones down everything. And then I applied a wash and it was amazing. I really enjoyed this. Now the cannons. I had fortunately here some metal cannons which I of course replaced the awful no detail very plain very boring ones uh, made of plastic so metal pieces on the model like this and good thread and wood pieces and wood detail it's always a blessing on a, on a model like this. And I had to thank this to Simon, which uh, kind of a year ago we were talking, exchanging some emails, and he was building a model ship and he never finished it. And he asked me if I wanted uh, the excess parts and wood, and um, yeah, of course, I paid for the, um, the shipping and he didn't want that, that he sent those pieces to me and paid for the shipping and when I received those it was all the timber used all this thread that I'm using here these metal cannons every extra detail is from Simon a beautiful gesture from the other side of the planet and from Australia and I am very very thankful Thank you, Simon, for all of this. Thank you very much. And these oars had exactly the same treatment as the boat, with a little bit of air spray, dry brushing. I tried to make them the same way as the boat, of course. I used matte 94 and a little bit of dark brown. And this is uh, the raft. This is the boat after finishing uh, all the work as you can see that those wood strips really paid off I, I'm no expert in this it was my first run on this but yeah I enjoyed it very much And now the stern of the hull. Um, I had to use a little bit of strips styrenes to where in the in the hull where it fits the stern it had a little gap. So I had to fill that gap and I used strips styrenes. It it worked perfectly. So I got lucky, I guess. And I enjoyed this very much also. You have to apply a little bit of pressure from both sides to the, um, the stern to be perfectly glued with no gaps, no seam lines. But in the end, I think it was uh, okay. Oh, and by the way, I used uh, fast CA glue here, okay? And here I realized one thing, as I told you before, these ships were filled with bitumen and all around. And inside the wood, I painted it a little bit clearer. But I have in truth to give it the same treatment as I gave outside the hull, I have to give it inside the hull. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give a step back in order to make the build a little bit more coherent. And so again, I'm giving a black base to the interior and doing the same exact treatment I did with the outside hull 
I am giving it inside. Uh, I only have to protect the deck, of course. And in the end, after dry brushing and all, I just thought that the, the, the union be between the hull and the deck would be a little bit more darker because of the bitumen also touching and moisturing and, and, and adding to the deck, you know. So I just weathered it a bit and I think it was, well, okay. And all this just to um, have a little coherence to the build because as I told you if it was weathered outside and the bitumen made the wood dark it would be also dark on the inside so uh, several again several mix of um, enamel paint uh, black base uh, dark brown a little chipping and in the end a little dry brushing which gave it um, more depth and it looked in my humble opinion it looked awesome I really enjoyed working on this hull and as you can see final result more coherent and in my personal opinion looks much much better it made no sense to have the outside darker on because of the bitumen and the inside just brown white like the deck it made no sense whatsoever so i think it's better like this And placing all the remaining decks they just slide it on their place and all this dry fitting paid off and I know guys when sailing the high seas all doors have to be closed but Hey, I thought that it would be, uh, I don't know, a bit different to have this door just a little bit open. And putting these details, all the ladders on the deck, um, all small details, it was quite frankly very relaxing. After painting and giving them the same exact treatment because they were made of wood, maybe different wood, but oak, uh, it's it's quite the same. The treatment would be the same, uh, bitumen all over the place. And after giving all these accessories, all this detail, a little bit of uh, weathering, it was a pleasure to put them on. Uh, the deck and almost completing this face. All this work on this boat and you cannot see it in the end so I'm thinking about maybe displaying this outside I don't know I'm still considering it and it was a real pleasure to do this step uh, next step will be the masts and the beginning of the rigging and for now I think I'm pleased with the result all this work all this effort and as you can see the shapes are beautiful 
it's not even still glued at the base so probably it's opposite as you can see the union between the hull and the base it's not correct because this is only for display I can remove it anytime maybe the next time I'll put it a little bit of ballast inside to feel the weight of the model you know and to give it a little bit stability because rigging this one uh, the masts was were all over the place very light so I had to be very very careful and in the end I think everything was worth it yes it's still a matter of debate those round dead eyes aren't they but I had to if I used the triangular ones I had to adjust everything in, uh, even the red lines and I wanted I really wanted to put some red lines on this one because it didn't even bring any thread or plastic red lines anything at all and it was a pleasure I don't know what to say it was a pleasure I really enjoyed this one it's a limited kit I mean it has its own limitations as I told you it didn't bring any thread those awful back form sails which with a bit of work they can actually look good okay nothing against it but you know what I mean that in the end I think it turned out okay and I got to get a good carpenter who made a wood base for this one and I was really pleased with the result uh, it's good still to see people that know how to do their work and this is the wood base very very good one so guys this ends this third episode I hope you enjoyed it and keep modeling guys keep modeling always always with a smile see ya